A warm greeting. Today is Monday, August 28, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. At the time of recording this video, it is 6.30 in the morning local time in Cuba and in Florida, where we are closely monitoring the tropical storm Adalia. It has begun a rapid strengthening process. Soon, it will become a hurricane before passing near or over Pinar del Rio. Unfortunately, this confirms what I mentioned in yesterday's video, where tropical storm Adalia seemed to be rapidly organizing. Several hurricane hunter aircraft have been investigating the area and have confirmed that the storm is intensifying quickly. This is reflected in some changes in the forecast, especially for the western region of Cuba, where a hurricane warning has been issued, and more significant effects are expected across the state of Florida. Before continuing to discuss what will soon become Hurricane Adalia, I wanted to mention that Hurricane Franklin has just become the first major hurricane of the season. It currently has sustained maximum winds of 115 miles per hour, making it a Category 3 hurricane. It is moving north-northeast and is expected to make a turn more towards the east, passing very close to Bermuda. Residents in Bermuda should be closely monitoring its development, as any deviation further to the right could pose greater risks. Now, let's focus on the Western Caribbean region. Here is Tropical Storm Adalia in the 5 a.m. Bulletin. The National Hurricane Center indicated sustained maximum winds of 65 miles per hour. Since then, we have observed that it has continued to generate strong thunderstorms and outer bands, indicating that it is possibly still rapidly strengthening. In fact, it's possible that during this morning, probably around 11 a.m., it will become a hurricane before reaching Pinar del Rio in Cuba. As I mentioned last night, the slow movement through the Western Caribbean has allowed it to remain over the region, providing better opportunities for intensification. The consensus of the trajectory models continues to forecast a northward movement at least until Tuesday, followed by a turn to the northeast. They are quite similar to yesterday's forecast, but the significant difference is that the intensity models now predict rapid strengthening over the next 48 hours. It is anticipated that just before entering Florida waters, it will be a Category 3 hurricane. This is a significant change, as the effects on central and northern Florida, as well as southern Georgia and South Carolina, will be more substantial compared to yesterday's forecast. Here we have the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. You can see that the tropical storm warning for Pinar del Rio in Cuba has been upgraded to a hurricane warning, as it is expected to become a hurricane today before reaching Pinar del Rio later tonight. It will then continue its rapid strengthening process, and by Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, it is forecasted to be a Category 3 hurricane when it passes closest to the city of Tampa. While the current trajectory is to the west of Tampa, the city could still experience strong winds from the southwest, potentially leading to significant storm surge-related flooding in Tampa Bay. In this latest projected path from the National Hurricane Center, the center of circulation of the future Hurricane Adalia is expected to pass over cities like Gainesville, Lake City, and Jacksonville, possibly as a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane. Other cities like Savannah and Charleston could also experience strong winds and precipitation between Wednesday and Thursday. We remain vigilant for any deviations in this forecast, especially if it moves a bit further to the right than anticipated, as that could result in more significant impacts on central and northern Florida. The National Hurricane Center notes that any deviation to the right or left could mean significant changes in the maximum effects felt across the state. It's important for residents from Fort Myers to Panama City, and all counties within that range, to stay alert and prepare for the direct impact of a major hurricane. These slight changes in trajectory can lead to significant impact changes. For example, here's yesterday afternoon's projection, and you can compare it to last night's adjustment, which shifted the trajectory slightly to the east. This slight change means that Tampa could experience more storm surge flooding. Likewise, Jacksonville is at a higher risk, potentially facing hurricane force winds. Now let's briefly look at the most recent runs of the global models. Here's the GFS model, which shows a Category 3 hurricane, or nearly Category 4, moving over Florida's Big Bend around noon on Wednesday, then heading towards southern Georgia and South Carolina. We also have the European model projection, which depicts a Category 2 hurricane entering the Big Bend region during the early hours of Wednesday. Additionally, the German model indicates a Category 2 hurricane entering the Big Bend and crossing over Gainesville and Jacksonville. Note that there's consensus around the Big Bend trajectory, but remember that any deviation to the right or left could pose greater risks to other areas. During the next 24 hours, this cyclone will pass over western Cuba, generating heavy showers and hurricane force winds. For instance, the GFS model estimates that between 200 to 225 mm of rainfall could fall over Pinar del Rio, posing a high risk of flooding over the next 48 hours. Similarly, 
the latest projection shows wind gusts exceeding 115 km per hour, especially over Pinar del Rio. Residents in western Cuba should be finishing their preparations as weather conditions deteriorate throughout Monday morning. As it moves over the state of Florida, you can see that the new rainfall estimates indicate a maximum precipitation band of 6 to 10 inches affecting regions from Fort Myers northward, including the central and northern parts of Florida, as well as southeastern Georgia, southern South Carolina, and North Carolina. Flooding is expected across these areas, so preparations should be made for this significant rainfall event. In terms of wind, consider the European model projection, which indicates that nearly the entire state of Florida could experience tropical storm force winds. This includes Fort Myers up to Port St. Lucie, and all counties northward to Jacksonville and Tallahassee, potentially experiencing tropical storm force winds. Hurricane force winds would be specific to the circulation center's path. With the slight adjustment to the trajectory, moving a bit to the right as observed last night, you can see that the projected storm surge for Tampa Bay has increased. It's now expected to range from 4 to 7 feet, affecting the region starting from Tuesday. For the Big Bend area, storm surge is anticipated to be between 7 to 11 feet. Remember that this forecast can vary significantly with any modification to the trajectory, whether closer to Tampa or further to the west. Well, that concludes this morning's forecast. I will be closely monitoring the evolution of tropical storm Adalia, which is on the verge of becoming a hurricane. Residents in western Cuba should complete their preparations this morning. For residents in central and northern Florida, southeastern Georgia, southern South Carolina, and North Carolina, preparations should be completed, as the effects of the future Hurricane Adalia are expected to start being felt from Tuesday onward. In the afternoon or evening, I will provide an update on this forecast through a new video. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon for notifications on my new videos. Until then, take care.